Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this series of videos, we are talking about the groundbreaking experiments of biological science field. And the last video, we talked about the Griffiths experiment, which was conducted in 1928, proving that horizontal gene transfer, which is also known as the transformation in bacteria. Now, the second experiment that we are going to talk in this lecture is conducted in 1952 by Harshay and Chase. This is known as Harshay Chase experiment. This experiment proves that the DNA is actually working as genetic material. Because before that, uh, we pretend to believe that either DNA or protein or any other thing can act as the factor or the genetic material. So genetic material is a thing that can be transferred from one generation to the next or can be transferred between the individuals of the same generation. But how exactly Harsh and Chase proved the transfer of the genetic material and the role of the genetic material as DNA. So let's look at here. The experiment conducted by Harsh and Chase was, was very much steep and uh, lies between a very fundamental fact uh, between the protein and DNA because you know earlier this is the tie between scientists and researchers that some believe that protein might be the genetic material some believe DNA might be the genetic material so now between that that uh, war uh, Harsh and Chase properly proved that not protein should never be the genetic material only DNA can be the genetic material because DNA was far simple protein uh, people found protein in different places so people thought the protein was the material but Harsh and Chase proved it wrong with the experiment. Now, the basic understanding of the experiment lies between the differences of protein and DNA. That is the unique molecule that is present in both the case. In protein, we have sulfur present. In, in DNA, we have phosphorus present. So keeping that thing in your mind that sulfur can never be present in DNA or phosphorus can never be present in proteins. So keeping that thing in our mind, Harsh and Chas brilliantly designed the experiment uh, with bacteriophage and E. coli. So the experiment, let me draw uh, the out sketch of the experiment. The sketch of the experiment was simple that this is E. coli and in the three steps of the experiment, I should draw three situations in all these cases. So yes, so these are two separate situations of the experiment. One for keeping in mind that protein might be the genetic material, one keeping in mind that DNA can be a genetic material. Now, these are the bacterial cell, E. coli cell, and then I should draw bacteriophage. So, for simplicity, I'm drawing the phage with the, with the round head and tail, but actually it's not round. But for simplicity, I, might, I must draw it like this. Okay. So, so at this thing, uh, what we can say is that the bacteriophage in reality, let's say here we are looking at transferring a genetic material from uh, the phage by the phage inside the E. coli. So the genetic material is present here inside this phage head. Okay. Now let's say, let me make it a little bigger so that you can see this properly. Okay. So what they did in the in the first part where they believe that protein can be a genetic material, what they did here is that they tag uh, the proteins which contain sulfur you know sulfur may be present in protein or amino acids that's why in this case they tag the protein with the especially sulfur with radioactive form of the sulfur so radioactive sulfur is present radioactive sulfur is present where the protein means the coat protein so let me draw it the coat proteins radioactive sulfur radioactive sulfur is present in the phage coat because the head of the phage is built with that protein and that might carry multiple amino acids with sulfur residue. So we tag it with, with a radioactive sulfur. On the other hand, the other uh, side of the experiment where we assume that the DNA is the genetic material, they tag uh, phosphorus uh, in the DNA as radioactive phosphorus or heavy phosphorus. So let me draw that with this blue color. So again, this is radioactive phosphorus. Okay, Both in this case radioactive. The second case, phosphorus, the first case, protein in the coat. Now, this phage also have a coat, but that is not leveled, normal. This phage also have a DNA, but that is normal, not level. So this is the two separate situations, you know, opposite situations out there. Now, 
This is the very first step that is infection or which you know we can also say adsorption. Okay, infection step where the bacteriophage will infect the E. coli. So we'll allow the bacteriophage to infect the E. coli. We'll provide them the time, we call it the incubation period where the E. coli will be infected by the bacteriophage. We'll keep them for some time. And then what we did is a second step of this experiment. And then it's all about blending, you know, and agitation. Agitation breaks the interaction between the bacteriophage and the E. coli cell. Okay, so that's the second part, agitation. Let me write it with this black color itself, agitation. So agitation is done here. Okay. So agitation causes the breakage of the interaction. So what we can see here now. So this incubation period is the actual time where the bacteriophage should transfer the genetic material. Because while we are doing the agitation, we are trying to break the interaction. So the time for incubation is gone, it's over. So we'll provide some time period at this point for incubation. So this is the time for the gene transfer as well. And transfer is done. Okay, transfer is done. Now what we do, we do this agitation that will break open the phage, break open the phage from the body of E. coli. Second step is done. Now the third step is centrifugation. So let me write it. The third step centrifugation in the centrifugation process what will happen you know at the end of the agitation process will end up in E. coli cells separated phage cells phage separated so what will happen then after the centrifugation phage and uh, the E. coli cells will be separated based on pellet and supernatant distribution based on their weight so once this process is done then phage will be removed and will only analyze these two things either supernatant or the pellet we will analyze both for the process because you know in the supernatant we have the E. coli cells in the pellet we have the parts of the protein fragments of the phage floating on the top so now if from both this part if you separate them and analyze them for the presence of the radioactive sulfur or phosphorus we can get a clear idea of what happened now what actually happened here is while they are transferring this genetic material, let's say at this point they transferred the genetic material. So in this case the material transferred is this black one, non-radioactive. In this case the radio labeled phosphorus. Okay. So same thing radio labeled phosphorus, radio labeled phosphorus and in this case normal version of DNA. But what happened here is the coat coat remained in the supernatant. So the one where we assume that the protein is the genetic material. We know that the pellet that carries the E. coli with the transferred version of the genetic element. We take that and we check the radioactivity there and what we found out no radioactivity whatsoever. Got it? So we know that that part carry E. coli with the genetic material inside but no radioactivity is shown and we put the radioactivity in the phage coat that means the coat proteins never took entry inside E. coli cell that means protein is not being transferred by the phage inside the E. coli that means protein should not be the genetic material now on the other hand the other system where we assume that the DNA is the genetic material, what happened? Again we take the pellet where we find the E. coli which is transformed, which is carrying the genetic material. If we test it, we found radioactivity. Okay. And that radioactivity we tag the phage, the DNA of the phage. So that same radioactivity is found inside the E. coli cell. What does that mean? It means that the DNA which was radio labeled inside the phage is actually inserted inside the E. coli. 
although in this picture it's not totally right i i i drawn this picture just to explain but actually in reality bacteria has its own chromosomal dna it has its own dna and the dna transferred from the phage is incorporated inside the bacterial dna okay it's not floating like a separate unit that's not correct so if you think by that way i just draw this picture to explain the experiment but in reality the transfer is made from the phage and all the genetic material from the phage transferred inside the e coli cell that part of the dna should be recombined that part of the dna should be combined with the chromosomal dna which is present in the bacterial cell from before okay that give rise so the radioactivity will find only in the part of the phage uh, dna which is incorporated inside the bacterial chromosome so this proves that the dna and the content of the dna that was present in the phage head is transferred inside the e coli so that is the thing which is being transferred so that thing is acting as a genetic material not the protein and what we found out in this case the content especially in the first system the supernatant which is filled with fragments of the phage head and protein components that was radio labeled that means that means what the radio labeled portions of the proteins are never took entry it was present outside the bacteria bacterial cell and then after the agitation step it gets dissociated so nothing is in there so this was a ground breaking experiment proving that the genetic material is dna not proteins right proteins may help in transferring the dna proteins obviously help in in any process of genetic transfers that been conducted uh, between bacteriophage or bacteria between bacteria and bacteria and so on but protein is not transferred dna is the one which is transferred dna is the one which will incorporate with the existing chromosomal dna of the bacterial cell so that they can function properly so that was harsh and chase experiment in 1952 it not only proves that the dna is the genetic material but also states the mode of transferring the dna by the phage inside uh, the e coli cell and which is also known as transduction you know in griffith's experiment it proved transformation and harsh and chase experiment proved transduction transduction is a process where uh, the bacteriophage may carry a fragment of other bacterial dna which it will transfer into a next bacterial dna which is also a type of horizontal gene transfer that means transferring a genetic element between the individuals of the same generation so that's the idea of harsh and chase experiment in 1952 so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friend as much as you can and subscribe to my channel to get many more interesting videos like that and obviously watch the next video on yuri miller experiment which was also conducted in the same year that is 1952 but published in 1953 so stay tuned and watch the rest